Welcome to Simple Kicking with your host, James Harrison. Parker Lewis is the kicker for the USC Trojans, and here he is hopping on the Simple Kicking show. Parker, what's up, brother? How we doing? How we doing? Dude, I am pretty excited to have you on because as we were talking in pre-show, you beat out a couple guys and had an awesome freshman season. We're going to talk about how you did it. We're going to talk about your background. We're going to talk about where you're going. But let's just go ahead and start off. Dude, how'd you even get into kicking? Um, so, you know, not the, not that big of a surprise. Um, you know, I was a soccer player, how, how most kickers start off. So, yeah, I played soccer my whole life really through, you know, I was like kindergarten through seventh grade. And um, going into my eighth grade year, I was – just got so sick of it. And uh, my dad was like, hey, like, you know, you've got a powerful leg. You know, it'd be fun to, um, you know, like try you out and pop Warner football. So, you know, I got into that, um, went to a couple of camps, got ranked. Um, and, yeah, I just fell in love with it, you know, ever since. Soccer got too serious, did it? didn't it? It it did get really, you know, you, you reach, you know, a certain level where, you know, you start like traveling, you know, across the country and then soon like internationally. And it just it, it was not for me. You know, this it's not Europe, you know. No. So you hop uh, and check out some some camps. But you had a big leg. Was it your dad that said, hey, like, hey, why don't you try out for the football team or it was my dad? It was it was my dad who um, turned me on because I didn't really you know, ever think about playing football before that, um, you know, my dad just thought it would be a great idea. So yeah, we just ran with it. And you have a coach back in Arizona, Sam Watts from some of our, some of our texts that we, we uh, exchanged. It sounds like he, he really taught you how to kick and is still a guide on your journey. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I credit, um, obviously I worked really hard, but I mean, I hundred percent would not be where I am today without the help of Sam. Um, yeah, he's he's based in uh, Buffalo, New York, but he he would fly out a lot. Um, and yeah, we would we would get a lot of work in, um, you know, I remember my eighth grade year through through high school. But, you know, with COVID, he's been in Buffalo, but we've been doing a lot of online sessions. Um, I send him clips. He'll send me a video analysis of what I need to do to improve. And um, but yeah, you know, we have a great relationship. It's funny. I, I asked a, on an Instagram poll yesterday you know, people's, who's your primary guide on your journey? And, and I'll ask you, you know, was it your, was it your coaches? Was it your parents? Was it some kind of priest or rabbi or pastor or whatever, you know, some spiritual religious leader, or was it like a pro or a college uh, player that you kind of looked up to? Who, who was a guide on, on this like early part of your journey? And uh, is that guide the same now? Yeah. Um, you know, so, so Sam always, uh, he trained, um, a guy named, uh, Blake Hobbiel, who was, a uh, Ohio state's kicker who, who just signed with the, uh, Tennessee Titans. And I remember when I was in eighth grade, he was just committed to Ohio state. And, you know, I really looked up, up, up to him all through high school. Um, you know, I, you know, his senior season was my freshman season and, you know, like just seeing, you know, how he matured through through kicking and, you know, how, you know, a goal of his was to go to the NFL. That's a goal I have. Um, it, you know, he's always, always, always been, um, you know, a role model and we have a really great relationship and I still look up to him. So, so, uh, so he's kind of, it sounds like he's kind of like a big brother of sorts. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, we're unpacking a little bit. This is starting to make sense a little bit more because you graduate. Well, before you even get there, dude, how did you end up at USC? Those dudes don't give college scholarships, you know, very often. Right. And they already had a really good kicker and a really good backup and even some third team guys that were good. How did that end up? I mean, you talked about the camps. What's the story behind getting to USC? Um, my, um, sophomore summer going into my junior year, um, that was like my big, like camp. Mm -hmm. Um, I hit a ton of summer camps 
Um, I went to Oklahoma State, University of Oregon, UCLA, mm -hmm. Stanford, and then I finished at SC. And I didn't get offers from any of those other schools, but um, I remember going to USC was like the, the final one. Um, and I was like, dream school. Um, and I was just, you know, hitting hitting my ball. And John Baxter, who was the special teams coordinator at the, at the time, um, went in at lunch at our break and said to Coach Helton, he said, if, if you care about this football team, you better come out here and watch this kid kick. And he didn't tell, um, he did not tell Coach Helton who I was, my description. He said, you all know who he is. And um, I remember he, Coach Helton walks out and I'm doing kickoffs. And I'm like, like wow, like head, head coach doesn't really, doesn't really come out during, uh, you know, like special teams camps. And um, I was, I was hitting, I was hitting the biggest ball and it was, so my dad, he said it was hilarious. My dad said, this is either going to go really well or really bad. <laughs> Coach Helton walked probably a yard and a half. He, it was the kickoff tees here, yard and a half right here. And it's just right here. Just, just watching me do kickoffs right there. And I hit, I, I smoked all of them. And then I remember I, I went and got a drink and he came up to me. He said, hey, um, like, I want you to do some field goals in front of me. And he cleared all the kids were doing like drill stuff. He cleared all of them off. Yeah, you guys go to the side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he uh, he had me he had me kick multiple points and uh, he he set me over to the side and um, he offered me a full full ride on spot. So it was it was really it was so surreal. And uh, I mean, I was the first kid in my class to receive a full scholarship offer. So um, for, for specialists. So, you know, it, it was a really cool, really cool moment. Okay. Never forget it. Okay. So you get a college scholarship offer from the head coach's mouth directly to you yes. on you, the USC practice field. Yeah. That's a moment, man. Yeah, it was, it was now. Okay. So did you commit on the spot or, or what happened there? Yeah, I I remember on the on the way home, um, I called Coach Baxter to to commit. I mean, I already knew I was going to commit there, but it was just like, yeah, kind of. I remember I remember just driving and just that whole. I couldn't even tell you what happened from like that moment on to like halfway to we, we were in like Gila Bend driving to Arizona. Like, I was my mind was just so like, <laughs> I was proud nine. Um, yeah. And yeah, I called him, and and he wouldn't he wouldn't let me commit. He wouldn't let me commit. He said, um, I really want you to think and uh, like, think about, you know, this is a, it's a big decision. And uh, he said, I really want you to think about it and make sure it's the, it's the right decision. Not like trying to sway me or any way, but just, uh, you know, more for like myself, um, yeah. which I really respected. So I came up with a list, um, you know, and all of them, you know, like the education, you know, the, yeah. the football, the tradition, the family aspect of the team location i mean it it hit every every point to a t so it was a really really easy decision but that was that was um it was a really 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 special moment it, it, it it's you're at a special place uh, and you follow a lineage of really good kickers um and good specialists and what was that like you know coming on campus knowing that there are some guys ahead of you that are not just good but really good. And isn't there a banner of one of those guys like outside the Coliseum? Yeah, right yeah, now? there is. Yeah. When uh Chase beat um UT. Which I was yeah. on the sideline for. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that I heard that game was crazy. Um yeah. but yeah, no, coming coming into it, I mean, um, not many people know this, but um I so I actually met Chase. He was a junior at Modern Day at the time. I was in eighth grade and it was my first Coles camp ever. It was at a Fullerton college. And it, it was so crazy. Cause in my, like, in like my promo video, yeah. like I got a video before it's, it's me kicking and then Chase is right up oh, next. So, and then, like the fact that we both ended up at SC and it, it was, it was crazy. So I've known Chase for, for a while. Um, 
know, he's a really good friend of mine. I still, I still text him to this day. Um, but yeah, coming, so coming in, um, you know, Chase is like, uh, honestly, a, like a big brother to me was really helpful with, you know, how, how things work and all that. But obviously, you know, everybody knows, um, you know, I early, enro- I early enrolled and that was the weirdest semester ever. I mean, we got through one spring ball practice and we were sent home. So coming into fall camp, um, uh, and it was an even weirder season with the late start date, start date we had November 7th. Um, I remember going into fall camp. Um, it, it was, I always had the mindset. Um, I literally, let me show you right here. I charted, I like, I wrote down, I feel like it's always good to have, have things in writing. Like I have my, my, my fall camp, everything, everything I did through fall camp. Um, I wrote down, wrote down everything. I stretched, I set goals, but when it really came down to kicking, um, I didn't, I wasn't competing against Chase. I was competing, I was competing against myself. So, um, um, wrong. so yeah, I was, I was competing against myself and, um, I feel like that was, um, the biggest thing that, that pulled through. Um, like I, I remember a huge thing that we did was, and this is what really separated myself was, um, every Saturday we would go to the Coliseum. Mm-hmm. And we would do like live team stuff, like the games on the line. And um, yeah, I remember I was, I made everything to Kali. And that was one of the things that the coaches really respected. And like, they were like, yeah, like this, this kid's like game time when it, when the pressure's on. So that was, that was my mindset. Okay. The mindset was I'm competing against myself, but, so, so you didn't look at his stats and compare them to your stats. You didn't compare your stats to anybody else's. You were working and focusing on what you needed to do to put that brown ball through the yellow pipes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Was there anything in there that helped you? Was there a thought or a technique piece or uh, what allowed you to perform at the level at which you did? Probably just um, to hit hit my ball, and uh, I I I'm gonna be honest. I hit my a ball is I have a really good a ball, and um, you know some things with kickers they when they hit an a ball or a really good ball, they try to beat that ball. They try to hit it harder next time, and uh, you know I I remember I was I was always trying to just, you know, repeat it, not, you know, go over the top with it and, uh, you know, just hit, hit my ball, like had the mindset of, I've been here a million times. Like I'm meant to be here. Um, that was, that was what I told myself. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it played off well through, through, through fall camp. So you get the nod, you get the nod. What was that moment like? Oh gosh. It was, um, it, this is this is actually a really really funny story. So, um, the whole thing with with COVID was to, um, you know, our our team, you know, we I so I got COVID, and um, I got the antibodies, and um, my my roommates, my 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 friend group, they they all were in that same boat. So, we had the antibodies and. God, this is so. Um, we we went out. This is Halloween night. We this is Saturday. Halloween's on a Saturday. We finish our practice, and Coach Helton says, "You better not go out on Halloween." Like all of you guys, you better not go out on Halloween. We, my friend group, and I were like, "Dude, the next time Halloween's going to be on a Saturday is in seven years from now." we go to usc we have we have the antibodies we cannot get covid like we're going out so we went out they found out and obviously this is october 31st this is a week before the season Uh and 
I remember I get, um, I got, I, they found out and, um, I got called up to coach Alton's office and, uh, he goes, he goes, Parker, I, I don't, I don't know whether to hug you or slap you. And I'm like, I like, I knew, I knew I was going in there because, because I was in trouble. Um, but I was like, hug me. And, uh, he first scalds me. I shouldn't have gone out. And then he says, you're starting against Arizona state. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So it was, it, it was, it, it's really funny to, to, to look, to look back on, but, um, no, it was that. That's that. That's how I how I found out I was I was starting. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! So you go out against Arizona State, which wasn't exactly a blowout game, right? Like that was a game where you were really needed. So talk about that moment. Yeah. No. I. I mean. I guess you could say I. 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 I my first game winner was my first game if you count PATs as a game winner, but, uh, no, the, the onside kick, um, honestly, that was, we came back from a 99.98% chance of, of losing. It was just like two, two touchdowns in like 40 seconds or something like it it just some of the stuff we did. So like the onside first, it was the onside. And then, (laughs) Oh gosh, that that game was, and no fans, of course. Right, no fans, of course. Dude, so you execute this onside kick. You're, you know, went from not having a season that was totally canceled. The Pac-12 canceled it, and then now, you know, you're you're playing major D1 football as a true freshman. Okay, is there any? other moment that really outshines that you'll look back and say, wow, that happened. That was cool. Yeah, probably. Yeah, no, nothing. Not, no, nothing, nothing beats that. It, I, I was going to say I had a really good game against Utah. Um, I went four for four against Utah and I was really pumped for that. But I mean, Overall, from a team effort, yeah, nothing beats that. I mean, yeah, nothing beats that Arizona State game. Okay, dude. So this is Parker Lewis. We got a couple more minutes here. He's now a sophomore at USC. Dude, you write down your goals. You've got a plethora of notes. What's the goal for this upcoming season with camp starting here in a few days? You know, obviously, you know, I want, I want to, I want to be perfect on, on field goals. I've got some, you know, technical stuff. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to just get drilled down. Um, so I can just have like a maintenance through, through season. But I mean, you know, just getting the operation time down, um, you know, like with, um, my holder, my snapper, um, getting that to where, you know, we're, we're one unit. That's, that's a, very 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 massive key um to success so that's one goal that i have is to you know be perfect get you know unity with the snap hold kick um yeah other other goals um you know i want to i want to make it to the rose bowl or a new year's six bowl you know we we lost against oregon last year in the uh pac-12 championship which was brutal but um yeah i i gotta gotta win that pack so you've got you got some big goals there, man. It's it's funny. I was talking to Nick Folk. He's the kicker of the New England Patriots. He's been on this show. Uh, got got to hang out with him last week. And when I was asking him, he was like, "Dude, I'm just kind of going back to the basics." And he's coming off one of the best seasons of of his entire career. Yeah. No. I mean, it's it's only it's always good to to look back at the at the basics. And you know, I I I still look at film when I was you know, a sophomore in, in high school. And I'm, I'm looking at what I did good there that I can improve on now. And I'm always looking at old film. Yeah. That's a really, I, I love that. You know, I'm back to the basics. That's cool, man. So this season is, is, is coming. Uh, you're, you're a sophomore. You've, you've grown exponentially in a very short period of time. Um, are there any obstacles or any tough, you know, 
battles that you had along along your journey that maybe the normal person wouldn't wouldn't know because from the outside looking in, dude, you're a highly ranked kid who, you know, came in and just cleaned house. It kind of seems like the road may have been paved for you. Yeah, no, it's you know, it was it was it you know, it it might look like that from, you know, like an outsider's perspective, but you know, they don't they don't see, you know, like all the work that you know, like I'm trying to graduate in three years. Like I'm gonna my goal is to graduate um fall semester of 2022 and declare for the 2023 draft. That's a massive goal that I have for myself. If not, I'm going to get my MBA and then, and then declare. Um, so, you know, just with, you know, it's a, USC is a tough school yeah. uh, academically. So, um, you know, like staying on top of my grades, you know, I, I just got the, uh, the Mark scholar athlete award. I saw um, that on your Instagram. I, I just, I just got that in the mail. So I'm really proud of that. Um, so yeah, no, it's the student athlete life, life is, is hard. You know, it's not all, you know, nice and easy, you know, from like an outsider's perspective, you know, how those writers will write, Oh, you know, he lives the perfect life, blah, blah, blah. No, it's, it's a, it's a lot of hard work and, and I've, I've worked really hard and I'm continuing to work hard to get where I want to be. So Parker, if people want to uh, find out more about you or you know get connected, say there's some young high school or middle school kicker that maybe wants to ask you questions, how can they find you? Yeah, um, just my uh, my Instagram. Uh, if they want to want to DM me, um, they can they can. If you got any guys that like want to text you to text me, um, you know there there are a couple um, coaches that have reached out about you know kids seeking advice and. Um, you know, I, I love giving back, um, you know, kicking is, you know, it's, it's opened a lot of doors and it's been yeah. a really great opportunity for me. So I love to give back. And if there's any advice I can give to guys looking to play at a power five level and be a student, student athlete, um, you know, I'd love to talk to them, help them out. Man, and that sounds awesome. Well, the the biggest thing that stood out from this conversation, and I, you know, we got to get you back on, especially after the season, to see you know how you got those goals and how you reached them. But you seem like a very goal oriented, process driven, and motivated young man. That's kind of what I'm the vibes that I'm that I'm feeling from the West Coast tonight. Appreciate that. So. Well, this is Parker Lewis. He's the sophomore kicker at USC. You heard him. Um, he, you can DM him. I think he's at on Instagram at Parker Lou without an S and an underscore. And then also you're on Twitter at Parker uh, Louis. Uh, again, it's that's Lou Lewis without an S. Dude, thank you so much for joining the Simple Kicking Show. Like I said, we got to do this again sometime, brother. This was this was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed the content. Man, drop a like, comment, or even subscribe. It would be really cool to hear from you. Also, you can find Simple Kicking on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and even TikTok.